Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going down to Richmond uh, for the weekend. We're going to a, one of my buddy's weddings. Uh, he came to ours, so we found it only fitting to go to his in return. Um, but it's also a great excuse to go to some of the many awesome breweries down to Richmond. Uh, there's Triple Crossing, there's Stone, there's Vale, there's Star Hill, there's Ardent, there's, I mean, just tons of others. Uh, so where are we going today? Well, we haven't made that decision quite yet. It kind of depends on where the rain when, when the rain stops, and if it does, we might hit up one of the uh, rooftop breweries. But if not, then we'll have to find an indoor brewery. I was thinking Star Hill might be a good solution. Yeah, maybe. And if not, maybe Vazen. Yeah, Vazen's also good. They got that covered area, too. Mm -hmm. It might be cool. Um, but yeah, it's just been a really rainy weekend up here in the D.C. area, so it's kind of hindering plans a bit but uh, I don't know we're gonna drive down there it'll take a few hours and we're gonna see kind of what we have we're a day early for this wedding so today we all we could just go drink pretty much all day and do nothing so let's go down there grab some beers and see where we end up yeah Star Hill and got us some beers. I got the Grateful here. I got the uh, Sonic Haze. Oh, the new Sonic Haze. Yeah, nice. it's pretty good. Yeah, I've been hearing about the Sonic Haze, but we just don't see it in our area, so... Well... Hard to find. That's why I took advantage, and... Mm. They have these cute little half pours. I like this. And these cute little glasses. And to be honest, after that journey and my nap, I can't do more than the half pour <laughs> right now. I'm just going to fall asleep again. So it's interesting to see the build out of this place because last time we were here, we were at other breweries, but we stopped by and saw kind of like some of the progress that they were doing when they were building this place. And it looked like it was going to be really cool, but at the time just wasn't done yet. So now it's all finished and it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. They got this like outdoor area on the, on the main floor behind us here. But then they also have like an outdoor area up top, like a rooftop bar, which is really nice. Bathrooms upstairs. Yeah. Lots of plants. Yeah, some like lighting up there, like hanging lights. It looks really neat. Probably at night it's gonna look like great. Yeah, it probably looks gorgeous at night. I would love to come here for a beer at night. Star Hill comes from a long lineage of, I mean, they were incepted. The, the brewery was formulated in uh, a music venue back in the oh, day. Oh, so, was that a music venue? I didn't realize that. Well, well yeah, I mean, like they, the, the idea was, in, was instantiated inside a music venue. And, oh, okay. You know, the owners were talking about, hey, we should have, we should form a brewery, and that was how it got started. And Star Hill's always been about the music, like hosting live music, shows, events with music, any, anything music based, you know, is, is is what they're all about. So a lot of their beers are, you know, kind of harkening back to song names or famous bands. Grateful. Right. I mean, that's probably kind of like a Grateful Dead, Dead thing. Yeah. You know, the okay. Roxanne Sour is like, you know. The police. <laughs> yeah, there's, got you know, it. The whole Sour Pack actually is all famous women in music, so. Mm, that's pretty neat. Awesome. I just I just put two and two together. I was wondering why I did see a lot of like band related names and kind of icons. Yeah. And their marketing. That's exactly it. And their branding. So the Grateful Man, very light drinking beer, four, under 5%, 4.7, 4.8. It's getting increasingly hard to find this, though, in my area. I don't know why, hmm. but I can't find this in the stores very often, so I thought I had to take advantage. It's got this really, like, nice florally hoppy note to it. It's very bitter, but it's got this, like, sort of floral forwardness that I really like out of it. Um, very balanced. Um, yeah, I, I just I just really think it's a great uh, sort of standard issue go-to IPA. So I, you know, I'm I'm super into it. I've always been. It's technically a pale ale, I guess. Yeah. But like they list it under IPAs, so I don't know. Like, I think it's more of an IPA than anything else. Yeah. Definitely. To be honest, it's like but a session. I feel like it's more of like a, session a session IPA. IPA. It's like a session West Coast IPA. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. How's yours turning out? 
It's good. I mean, it reminds me of um, just, was it the Looking Glass IPA mm -hmm. that they had? And, um, you know, it's not, I guess I was thinking this was going to be more like the Ramble On. Right. Um, but it's not. The Ramble On is super dense and hazy. Like, right. It's really, yes or And when you say, beer, and when it's called Sonic Haze, I don't know. I was just thinking it was going to be hazy. I thought it was going to be way hazy. more hazy than that. It's yeah. not hazy at all. I mean, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty clear. I mean, mine's pretty clear, but it's yours a little, is close. It's a, yeah. You don't get a lot of fruit notes in there. You get more of it. Oh yeah, it's a little bit like sweet, but. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's been one of my favorite breweries for a long time. And they're a Virginia's second oldest craft brewery. So that's pretty nice. cool. Sh only short of um, Port City. Port City's the oldest? The oldest. Oh, the oldest yeah. commercial craft brewery in Virginia. Oh. Uh, and Star Hill is second. And I think they formed in 1996, 97, something, something close else, to that. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty ancient, but uh, they're still cranking out like desirable beers. They got the whole sour line. They got the you know a vast IPA line. Right. New England and West Coast, and they have awesome place. They have Lynchburg, awesome place. They have Roanoke. Roanoke, awesome place. They have um, here, here Richmond. <laughs> yeah. And then Crozet, their Crozet. original. Flagship location. location. The original location is pretty small yeah. compared to this. I'm gonna say. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, always been really small, and it's in this weird like cut cut through yeah. like right next to like some old train tracks that are no longer uh in <laughs> use but it's it's an it's odd like, location well there's also nothing around it other than nothing. like a pizza place well, there, so. there are like homes but right like there's you no, don't like, know where they are right they're like out there's there. nothing to like do around it no so you might as well just go drink cool man star hill awesome let's do it Brewed with maize and lime. Well, it's nice and crisp. Oh, I like okay. yeah. yeah, there's like a little tiny twinge of lime in there. Highly crushable. Ooh, that's really good. But you do get this different essence of corn that you're not used to. Yeah. It's not that typical sweet corn. It's a tradition. It's maize. That's maize. That's interesting. There you go. I mean, it's really, really clear. Definitely a really, really clear looking beer right there. It's not even like a corny, like a, uh, I don't know what to call it, like an anheuser bushy corn. Right. But it's like a more authentic corn flavor, I guess. The traditional corn we're used to is a bit sweet. This is just hearty. It's yeah. just, it's, 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 it's like, like a hearty, almost. yeah. Yeah. It's like it's, a hearty vegetable. It tastes like a share crop. Yeah. <laughs> These french fries, though, from, where, where is this place? It's called Gro Grocery, Stella's Grocery. Next door. Um, I got a grilled cheese. Sandra got the Cubano, which was actually really good. Grilled cheese is like okay, but check this out. I mean, look at how much bread there is on this sh And there's like, that's the cheese that I get? Really? Come on, guys. The fries are pretty good, though. The fries are really good. I must say that. Mm -hmm. I wish they gave us a little bit of something extra. I mean, we just got ketchup packets. I mean, if they made like some sort of like craft mustard or I don't know, yeah. some sort of mayo thing to go with this seasoning, which is really good, that would be amazing. It's like weird food music. Sounds like a recorder. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I don't even think that's a thing anymore. I think they recorders. I, they took them out. I think recorders are no longer an instrument that they play in third grade. That's horrible. Music class, yeah. 
I, st I think I still have mine. No more hot cross buns. <laughs> <laughs> hot cross bun. See, See how, how they, they run. run. See how they run. Doesn't make sense. Buns don't run. No, that's three blind mice. These buns don't run. Three blind what? mice. Three blind mice. It's the same exact song. I know, but I don't remember. Really? <laughs> it is the same song, isn't it? Hot Cross Buns and Three Blind Mice? How's Hot Cross Buns go? Hot Cross Buns. <laughs> hot Cross Buns. Something, 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 right? Yeah. No? Yeah, I but... We should YouTube that. Yeah. See pastry. how they bake. I, I don't think it was See How They Bake. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> so Vasen has Scandinavian heritage. They're Swedish, or at least some of their owners or family of the owners are. And Vasen is all about bringing the their love of the environment and the outdoors to the public through beer. So they brew what they like. They don't care about if people don't like it or do like it. They That's what they do. And their environment here reflects that. They have this gigantic rock wall over here with a bunch of fern gully type things happening. This like a bunch of plants. They've got couches for convenience and sitting. And they've got this giant mural wall of an elk in the forest. And it looks amazing. That's like the coolest thing ever. Is it elk or reindeer? Uh, it might be a reindeer. I don't know. It's one of the two. I don't know the difference. Nice outdoor space here, semi-covered. The food trucks always seem to be here. One time during the festival that we worked with Rocket Frog, we saw like 30 food trucks lined out outside. The whole street was just food trucks. It was amazing. Right. So you can always find something for everybody here. And that's what I like about Bosm. The other thing I like about Bosm is that all their beers seem to be really, really well done. Um, there's, there hasn't been a beer where I've tried it from Boston and been like, ew, that's disgusting. Right. No, Whereas other good. breweries in this area, some of which I have had like disgusting beers right. that were drinkable, but like they just weren't good. Yeah. But not, Boston always knocks it out of the park. They always know what they're doing. It doesn't matter what style they're doing. It's going to be at least passable, right? It's going to be at least good. Like. You won't, you won't come out of here saying, man, that, that sucked. Yeah, no. Even their no IPAs, like their double IPAs are all really good. The only knock I have against them is that their can prices are kind of high. Yeah. I got to say. I mean, let's be realistic. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's, if that's in our area only. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll find out when I buy a few packs There's here there, yeah. and see the price difference. But yeah, it's a bit pricey. It's pricier than the other breweries in this area that distribute up where we live. And I don't know why that would be. Like, like, are they setting that precedent, or like, yeah. are they just saying, oh, well, we're worth it? I don't know. But either way, I think it's sometimes worth it, right? That's. My, my, my stance on like paying more for craft beer is is like if you're gonna if you're gonna charge more than the competition around you, it, it's got to be either way better beer or it has to cost you more to actually produce it. It has to be justifiable. Like I can't be paying your rent just because you have that rent. That wasn't my choice. Right. Like right. Like it's it's about the beer. I don't care about the environment so much. If you make good beer, I'll pay for it. But you just got to make it worth it, yeah? That's true. Make it, make it worth my time. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the rest of this bean roll. And uh, we are going to go to the next uh, place, which I don't even know where that is, but we're going to find out. I look like a character from Grand Theft Auto right now in this camera. I'm Nico Bellic. Cousin. All right, so we spent a few minutes at the hotel and now we are at Stone. Uh, you guys have to check this out. This is like one of the coolest places and we love it. Finally, finally made it inside Stone. It's been a long time since we've been here. 
Um, I'm just going to start uh, right off the bat with the uh, Never Ending Haze. This beer, um, I mean, it's supposed to be a haze bomb, I guess, but uh, it's, it's definitely pretty clear. For a beer brewed with like oats and stuff, you'd expect it to have a little bit more body. The taste is really good though. I mean, it has like this kind of orange peel thing that then like transgresses into mostly pineapple and then like a, a heavy citra sort of backbone. Uh, it's, it's like piney and resinous. Um, it's really good. Um, it's just as good as the time we reviewed it, I think. Uh, but it looks a little bit better here out of the tap than it did from the can, I think. It's a little less. Remember how we were saying it's like really dark? This one. I remember that. This one isn't. Yeah, it was a couple. It was like a year or two ago, but okay. I'll link it up here. Uh, but it, this one definitely, I think, displays a different color characteristic than than it did then. For the alcohol percentage, it's like what 4.7 or something crazy like that. I think it's fine. I got the um, the new Stone Hazy IPA. That's 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 it. That's what it's called. Hazy IPA. Hazy IPA. Nice. It's a new one, and it has this like psychedelic branding all over it, like 6.7 percent. It looks. This is what I expect out of a hazy beer. So this looks. Yeah, that's nice. the hazy beer right there. Opaque, super opaque. It's a little. Um, Ooh, resiny. Getting a bit of stone fruit in there, so not so much of the tropicalness. Yeah, that. it's a little more earthy than something like that would be. Ever since they were founded in 1996, they have been making some of, I think, the de facto West Coast IPAs that existed. Uh, hands down. Um, this Richmond Tap Room opened in 2016, and here they use a 250 barrel system, which is massive. This place, this tap room that you're seeing here is absolutely not even probably an eighth of the entire facility. Like when you drive by it, it just keeps going and going and going. And most of that is all production. It's all tank space, it's all pallet space, it's all cans. They, I mean, they distribute basically from those two facilities countrywide, maybe even worldwide at this point, I don't even know, but at least through the whole country. So that has to be big. And it impressed me in the same way that like when we went to New Belgium, excuse me, when we went to New Belgium, that was like huge. They're closing soon. It is now allowed to call for ports. It sounds like a train announcement, like yeah. board the platform, please, all aboard to Drunk Town. Let's go. All right, so this one is very clear. Not uh, this is like kind of not very indicative of stone. What is this, babe? So it's a blonde ale. Focus, um, Daniel. Called a Liberty Station cliche oh, blonde ale. Liberty Station blonde ale, and this is brewed in Liberty Station. Yeah, I think it's a location where one of their stone um, breweries are in California. Oh, it's much more carbonated than these other two, obviously. Being a blonde ale, it makes sense. It's dry, and it has this like really deep hay characteristic to it, like like really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Not overly hopped, which uh, you know, stone. That's funny coming from Stone. <laughs> a lot of the beers on their list today, I mean, they're starting to branch out. They've got a lot of different weird beers that you wouldn't normally associate with Stone. A lot of stuff that's <sighs> gasp, not IPAs. They make the... Uh, but they also make those the Arrogant Bastard Ale, so they were the original, like, hardcore... That, back then, that was the beer that you gave your friends and saw if they could take it. Yeah. And it was like a dare beer, right? Like they were like, I dare you to try this and see if you can handle it. If you went to somebody's house and they had an Arrogant Bastard like bottle on the wall, you were like, whoa, this dude's too serious, you know? And this is before like craft beer was as popular as it is now, so it's... Back in the day. Back in, we're talking back like early 90s. No matter what you say about them, um, you know, it's that consistency and we'll always have great that dedication to that great West Coast beer. I mean, they're unmatched in America anyway. Like that's, Stone is like one of the de facto IPA. Like that's, that's what an American that's, IPA yeah. is. It's a Stone beer. So Sandra decided to go grab another beer. So what is this one? The Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit? Sounds like a Halloween beer. It's uh, mm. loaded with pineapple but it still has a lot of that resinous character. It does have like that residual sweetness kind of thing happening. 
Um, but it's really resinous. Like that is so earthy and dense tasting. Dank. Danky, yeah, <laughs> really danky. danky. I'm getting a lot of orange out of that one though. Like really heavily orange rindy. So it's actually tangerine and pineapple. Okay. That's what they used. But yeah, I'm I can see a that. Lot of, I think that sweetness really comes out with that uh, pineapple in general. It's just like a, a really sweet kind of fruit and it yeah. blends to a lot of sweetness in general. And I'm getting a lot of that in this beer. It's a quintessential stone beer. That's what you expect out of a stone beer. Yeah. Lots of resin, lots of pine notes, but then they're mixing in tons of tropical fruit notes in here. Yeah. And I like the combination of the two. This is like a solid kick you in your pants, but like you know you're drinking a beer. Right. Whereas the Never Ending Haze is kind of like, you're drinking a beer, but it's more of like a, a tubing beer, like an, like when you're in an inner tube down going yeah. down the lazy river, that's the type of beer that is. So that actually reminds me now that we're here is that there was some kind of, um, I don't know if it was necessarily political, but there was an outcry from Stone, not too long ago, I think a few months ago, where all of their cans, the, the labels on the cans or the branding was all flipped upside down. And it was, and it oh, was a yeah. whole, they had this whole statement. I feel like I remember that. Why they were doing this. I never really read, read into it and I don't really know what is going on. But if anybody else does, well, it's great to know what exactly they're trying to do. But they did it for a few months where every can you would see was upside down. And people were like, what's going on? And then it was... I really, I think it's almost like there is some kind of, I think it was like a, some kind of an outcry like towards something. Okay. Huh. Well, yeah, if anybody knows, let us know. That's really weird and interesting. They grew so fast. If you look at their website, you can see they have this like whole timeline on their website of like how many employees they had at each year. And by year three, they had like, like quadrupled their num the number of their employees, which at that point was like 40 people. They were paying 40 people like in, in year two or three. It's crazy, it's like insane. They're a very successful brewery. Anyways, I think we've we've lingered too long. We're sorry, but we're getting kind of toasted and uh, <laughs> we got this wedding to go to tomorrow. So I don't know, we're gonna see what happens there. We might be able to hit a couple breweries before then. I think we, we're gonna try to go to Triple Crossing because they have pizzas and we're gonna try to do that for lunch. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get dressed up for that, I feel like that would be fun to get dressed up for, to go to a brewery, but maybe after the wedding, we'll definitely hit up a brewery if we have time and uh, we'll do that. That'd be fun. All right, cool. Well, till later, we'll see ya. Anything else to say about Stone? No. No, great. Well, enjoy the rest of the B-roll and uh, yeah, we'll catch up later. Sorry guys, we uh, found ourselves at the wedding the other night. We just decided to come home and crash. Uh, we were both pretty tired, so we didn't really go out and do too much after the uh, after Stone. Um, but uh, today we just, I don't know, the breakfast at the hotel kind of made us both feel kind of bad. Um, so we just took the day until the wedding and did nothing. Basically just sat in the hotel room all day and took naps and stuff and watched TV. Now, uh, we didn't bring a camera to the wedding, so you're gonna have to deal with the iPhone quality, so apologies about that. Hopefully you can hear what we're saying and see everything. We ended up at Triple Crossing after the wedding, though. Um, so I have the Call It Dreaming. Uh, this is a Citra and Sabro, I think. I don't wanna get that mixed up, but I think it's Sabro. Either way, it's just got this like nice light body, four and a half percent. It's very fruit forward uh, beer, but it has a nice citra sort of punch to the bitterness, but it still remains soft. I know that's 
that's all contradictory to what <laughs> each yes. thing I just said. Yeah. But it's it's soft, but it has a firm bitterness and uh, very fruit forward. I, I taste a lot of melon in this one, akin to an equilibrium beer, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not bad. I have uh, the North Park. It's a pale ale, five percent. This is on the more resinous side of things. Uh, that's it's almost just, to me that almost tastes like a West Coast yeah, pale ale like or something Coast like that. Beer. Yeah. It's piney. It has tons of resin. It's a little danky. Um, it's crazy that this is only a five percent beer. This does not taste like it's, a five percent beer. The thing about this one that I noticed right away when you when I tried it is that it's very clean. Like the yeast they use very just clean. drops right out. It's like super, super clean. It lingers um, a bit in the back of your throat and your tongue, which is what you normally get out of West Coast style IPAs. Mm. Um, but this is a pale ale. It's really good. Like, it's funny to see, and we said the same thing at Stone the other day, like, it's funny to see Triple Crossing doing cleaner styles, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's not something we associate Triple Crossing with. It's usually these Hazy Boys, um, bigger IPAs, Falcon Smash specifically is yeah. like our favorite, you know, Triple Crossing beer ever. But now, we have choices of pilsners and lagers and things like that, so uh, commendable. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of breweries are looking at the summer months and saying, we need to start making stuff that people can drink in 90 degree weather. And uh, yeah, we're finding it pretty much everywhere and that's pretty cool. I even saw an English bitter on their menu. Yeah. Where, where do you find an English bitter? Here, I don't know. Draft. I feel like we gotta try that it. It doesn't though. come from the UK. Yeah, I think we might have to. We try. should. We should do that. Yeah, our pizza is about to come out, so we're gonna uh, stop the video real fast. But once we get the English bitter, we'll be right back. So we got some killer food here. I don't know if y'all know this, but Triple Crossing produces some amazing pizzas, and they have pretzels, which they make. I think on site. I'm, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think like they do. they're super good. Um, yeah, so we got some more beers here. We got the English Bitter, which uh, English Bitters are a very sessionable, malt-driven style. Um, harkening back from the cask, you know, they're, they're associated with cask-style ales. Right. Um, they're, you know, very sessionable, like I said. Uh, it can range anywhere from gold in color to very kind of dark amber. This one is very, very golden, uh, pretty translucent. Yeah, it looks like a Boddington's. Yeah, it really does look like a Boddington's. Good old pub or a Tetley's. Good old Tetley's. This one's on nitro, so. That's the best way to have those. Yeah, we're gonna see, it smells amazing. When you get that foam on top of your lips, that's when you know. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really good. Yeah, that reminds me. It's uh, slightly bitter, mm. just big bold malt notes um, while still remaining like light in body. Um, that reminds me of a Boddington. It really, yeah, I was gonna say not it's, a sweet though. It tastes but... a lot like a Boddington's. Um, yeah, there's some. Well, th there's this coppery penniness to right. the Boddington's that I don't get out of this beer. Could be because this is on draft and we've never had Boddington's on draft, always True. in cans, because you just can't get it in this country right. without you know getting it in a can. So maybe that's it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, this is this is actually like really really enjoyable beer, um, and they have to be because like you were mentioning earlier. What are they doing in London every all day? I oh, mean, they drink. It doesn't matter what time of day. They watch soccer and they drink. You so, watch, yeah. You watch you, football, English football, the Premier Leagues, the Euro Cups, and you're drinking at eight o'clock in the morning or nine a.m. or whatever suits your your need. <laughs> so, and that need requires a three percent beer. So, yeah. pretty much. But yeah, a little watery, but that's totally to be expected. Very much uh, within style. What'd you, what'd you uh, so end up with? I got the Triangles um, 2021 version. I, I've never had this beer. It's a double IPA. It's I think it's been around for, um, I read something about seven years. Like I think this is their seventh, or this is their seventh generation of the Triangle wow. series. Um, I didn't read the hops. Well, it used. To, I know it used to be a triple IPA at one point, and then right. they kind of dialed it back over to the years double. to a double. Um, with which, yeah, a triple IPA isn't really a style that exists. Triple IPAs are just big double IPAs. And so this is, I, that's you know whatever. This is just a quintessential like awesome double IPA from Triple Crossing. I mean, this is this is essential. Like, triple Crossing is known for their good seven percent beers, their regular IPAs, and then their double mm, IPAs, yeah. and that's just loads of tropical notes a little sweet yeah it's really um, that's really like just dense it's delicious that's a good double idea that is good 
a little bit more firm bitterness than I than I thought was gonna happen there, but I think there's uh, mosaic in there, but I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. It tastes a little bit earthy. Might yeah. be, maybe. Mm -hmm. But anyway. We're gonna continue drinking and uh, we're gonna probably just go back to the hotel after this, but uh, if we don't see you after this, then um, that is the end of the vlog. And uh, next time we'll actually bring the camera out and we'll actually bring some microphones out and we'll we'll do that whole thing. But it's good to know that it might look and sound true. Okay. Maybe. You let us know. I don't know. Let's see what the iPhones do, right? All right, guys. Well, until next time, cheers and stay crafty.